It's budget time. This is the part where you figured out what guitar you like, you figured out the genre of music you like, you have considered like steel string, acoustic, blah, blah, blah. You figured out what it is you want to want to get out of it. Now, in the guitar stores, you're going to see a lot of price tags and they're going to go from like a couple hundred dollars to nearly a thousand dollars to can go up to like four thousand dollars so all of these guitars serve different purposes for beginners i have one rule buy the guitar you you think is cool and that's it so when i was buying my guitars i was like that's a cool guitar and that's the one i got obviously within my budget restriction i went for what i could go for like i could afford um, or my, my dad bought my first guitar, so what he could afford. And that is the approach that you want to take. I can guarantee you going and getting a guitar because a guy at the guitar store says, this is the right one to get. Typically, you if, it, if you can compromise, like if, if it's something you like, no, I need the Hello Kitty fucking electric guitar because I want it and I want to play it all the time and it looks so cool and I love that you get the Hello Kitty guitar but if it's like a guitar that looks like this and it's going to cost you 1500 and then there's another guitar that looks a bit similar and it only costs you 400 and gets you the job done uh, then I would definitely recommend getting the $400 one if you don't want to spend a lot of money uh, as you go up in price typically the quality of the build is good. And that means the guitar will stay in tune more, the guitar will last longer, the guitar will sound a bit better, and the guitar will be easier to play. Now, keeping the guitar in tune and making it easier to play is something that we are going to add on top of your bill. So basically, as soon as you do your budget, before you even spend a cent on a guitar, know that you are going to be spending between 50 to $100 to get a brand new set of strings and a professional setup on your guitar. Yeah, I cannot stress how important this part is. You need to get that done. So set aside on your budget, 50 to $100, and then reach out to a guitar technician. Um, ask the people at the guitar store, who do you recommend to set up my guitar or professionally set up my guitar? They might do it at the store, Usually Guitar Center in America, they were really great and they had like a special technician in the store that did it. Um, but in my town, the guitar store is really garbage at it. So I have like another guy who does it for me. Now you want to get that done because that's going to make your guitar very easy to play and very, very like you won't quit. This is the thing. We don't want you to quit. It wants to, want it to be easy to play and sound great. And we don't want it to be going out of tune every 10 seconds. And that's what that setup will do for you. It will make sure your guitar is correct. And I'm telling you, I bought a $4,000, that one over there, that Telecaster, you can see the blue one. I, I spent four grand, oh, it's, no, I spent $3,400 or something like that on that guitar. That guitar out of the box was shit. And I had to get it set up. And like, imagine that, Fender. 3000 something dollar guitar and it's just like absolutely garbage to play you know annoyed me the hell out of it like but i knew what the neck felt like i really want a telecaster it had a lot of cool features on it and i was like i knew this would be a good guitar and it has been a great guitar but it had to be professionally set up so even at a high echelon of price you know it it needs to get done prs though this bad boy the second i picked it up felt like a dream and that i guess that's just the difference in different brands but Either way, they all got set up by the same guy, set up exactly how I like to play them, and then that's it. Now, pick the guitar that you like the most. If it's like an entry-level budget, that's fine. You can spend like between, you know, 50 to $200 or $300 on a decent acoustic guitar, and then you're good. And you can do the same thing. You can buy starter packs that will get you like the electric guitar, the, the speaker, all those things. Do what you can. Uh, to make it as affordable for you as possible. The whole reason behind my school is so that you guys can spend the money on the equipment and then I'm going to give you that huge amount of like runway of knowledge so you guys can just teach yourselves and get better and you have a community of people that will help you. So don't be afraid to spend maybe just a little bit more because we now you now what my goal is that you guys don't have to go and pay 
you know, a thousand dollars or like 500 or for like 10 weeks of lessons to try and learn because we can just learn together for free and that would be great for you. Now, the guitar costs, I'm going to leave that to you guys. Whatever you decide you think is best, do that. Now, the first cost that 100% needs to be done is 50 to $100. Budget that for your professional guitar setup. Now, the next thing that you want to do is you want to buy a capo. So a capo is one of these bad boys. So this goes over the top of the fretboard like this. Bang. And basically, it means that I can play G, C, D. And then all I do is I put a capo on and I change. So what that's going to allow me to do is play a shitload of chords. Oh, sorry. A lot of chords. I, I don't mean to swear, but I just typically do. Um, just a lot of chords. It's going to allow you to play a lot of chords and you're going to get really, really good at... Um, playing through the fretboard. And that's what a capo does. So you definitely need one of these if you're a beginner and you want to start learning quite a lot of songs because we're going to have content that is going to allow you to play through so many songs and you're going to learn a couple of really cool tricks to learn songs super fast. And the capo is really important for that. Now, the other things that we want to do, just let me look at my notes here that I have. Guitar stand. One of these bad boys. Bang. We want one of those. So a guitar stand is very, very important because again, going back to our main mission, don't quit guitar. Um, you wanna practice guitar, so you need a guitar stand and you wanna put the guitar in a place that you are always gonna walk past so that you can pick up and do something. Um, typically, you wanna set your guitar up in a way that when you go to practice or when you're like, hey, I want to practice, that is what you need to get done. You need to get your guitar and you need to put it in a place that you're like, when I finish doing X, tie it with something you do every day. When I have breakfast, I will play guitar. And so, you know, you put your guitar in the kit near the kitchen or where you ever you have breakfast and the, the table or whatever next to it. Have your breakfast, grab your guitar, play for five minutes. That is the ultimate hack that I can like, you want to get good fast, just tie the playing of guitar or just picking up the guitar with some habit that you do every day. Just think about it. And, um, like you're gonna go for a shower, that means you go back into your bedroom and you go to your closet, right next to your closet, put your guitar. And that's what the guitar stand is for. So that is your hack. Now, the next thing that you'll need is picks. So going back to the guitar stand and the capo, typically that's gonna add about $50 to your bill. So already we're at 100 to $150, depending on the cost of the setup. Now, guitar picks, I use, one millimeter picks. So that's what these things are. You can just whoop, doo -doo -doo, bang, guitar pick. Um, some people prefer to use fingers. Some people prefer to use picks. I would recommend you get picks anyway. Now, I use one millimeter picks. Now, that is good for me because I have a lot of control. And typically, you know, the thicker the pick, the harder you can hit the strings and the bigger the dynamic range you're going to get. Now, as a beginner, you might not have a lot of control. So the, the thinner the pick, the better, um, the, the more forgiving it's going to be for your inconsistency in the strength of your right arm. Now, I would aim probably like anything between like, like 60 to 75, whatever they have in the setup. I can't remember because I don't buy those picks, but I'm pretty sure it's like 0.65 uh, to 0.7 something, anything in that range, you should go for uh, as a beginner because it'll it'll really give you a little bit of leeway. And then there's some that are like 0.5, like really thin picks. Don't get those because you still want to feel something. You don't want to have like super thin picks that you're just like, you're not feeling it. We want you to build dynamic control and we want you to be punished for strumming too hard. Like you need to learn where the threshold is between strumming too hard and not strumming too hard. So getting those pick is really important. Now, the other thing after you do that, so picks like a couple of dollars, you know, max, you can buy a set of like 10 for like five bucks or something like that. I can't remember, something like that. Now, like, the next thing is your strings. So when you go to get your guitar set up, so you're going to buy a guitar. Now, 
typically acoustic guitars have what we call 12s on them and electrics will have tens on them. Now, if you're playing guitar, that sounds a bit weird. You're like, what's the numbers? Basically, the numbers dictates the thickness of the string. So 11s or like, so 12s, right? The string here is like, fuck, I don't even know the, the definition of it. I should have Googled it. But anyway, we're here for beginners. Um, but basically, I've lived my whole life and I don't know the definition of it. Basically, 11s is thinner than 12. 11s are easier to just think the lower the number, easier to play. That's all you need to remember. But also remember, the lower the number, easier to play, thinner sound. So it might not sound super rich and full, but man, as long as it can make you play and do a good job, that's all we care about. So when you're going in budgeting, figuring out what you need to do, just remember that you're going to buy the guitar that you want. And then those are all the things that you need to have ready on the side to go. So you're going to buy light gauge strings. So ask the, guy, the people at the guitar store, whatever they're saying, and say, what gauge strings are these ones? And they will say 10s to something like 10 to 52s or something, maybe, or 12 to 54 or something. And you say, well, can I get a light gauge string? On an electric, I would 100% recommend you get nines. Nines to start. Tens are still really easy to play, but nines are even easier. So we're here about making life easy. On an acoustic guitar, if it's 12s, get 11s. And um, and don't and they might be like, oh, do you want heavy bass strings? You say no. I want the easiest to play strings. Please save my hands. I want easy. Say Luan said, I want 11s and then the lightest bass that it has. Because sometimes they give you like light um, top strings and then thick bass strings. You don't want that. Make sure you do not get suckered into that. That's really annoying sales tricks that some guitars be like, you get a great tone. It's just like, dude, tone does not matter right now. We don't want to quit guitar. And that's why you are spending the money to get the light gauge strings, to get a guy to set up your guitar correctly for those strings so that your guitar sounds fantastic and never goes out of tune as much as possible and is easy to play. So outside of that, preferential things, guitar case, you can get a guitar case, soft or hard case that adds about like 50 to $100 to your budget. Um, guitar straps, if you want to stand and play, that's also another one. Now, the huge cost that uh, for our electric friends and also our acoustic friends that want to live loop is if you are going down that route, so everything here that we just talked about fits for all guitars. Now, we're going to leave the acoustic guitar and like the steel string classical guitar. They can sit there now. This is for electric guitarists and loopers. So if you're going to do that, you now need to invest in either guitar pedals, an amp, like the bare minimum is an amp. You need a guitar lead and an amp. So you need your guitar lead to plug your guitar into the amp. Uh, you might need two guitar leads. So if you're looping, you will need a loop pedal. So like an RC30 or RC300, things like that, or whatever they, the newer range of looping pedals that exist are. You can get pretty cheap ones that are pretty good. Um, so if you're going to go down that road, you will have to spend uh, money on a couple of guitar, like depending on if you have pedals and stuff, you will have to get um, guitar leads. You have to get a guitar amp. If you decide to not go the amp route, there are a couple of really, really cool products out there. There's one that I'll link in the description. I believe it's called Smart Spark Amp. Spark Amp, I think it is. So it's like a little amp that you can plug your guitar into and then you can control it on your phone. It has like really cool, uh, really cool functionality. I'm sure that like Line 6 and a bunch of people have all copied it with their new amps, but definitely think about that. Um, and now once you get to this point and you decide like what you're going to buy, remember that uh, all those things need to be able to serve that you do not quit guitar. So remember, if you're playing electric guitar and the person's like, well, this is the amp and this is the only options that it just has a clean channel and a little bit of distortion. And then there's like an extra hundred dollars and you can get this thing that has like an insane button and it goes like crazy distortion and shreds. Get the one that has the insane button if you love like shredding metal cool sounds. 
because you don't want to be the guy who gets told, oh, you know, this one's good enough for you to practice. And then you go and grab it and you're like, this distortion sounds sucky. It's not like dirty and like full shred mode that I want. And so, you know, think about that kind of stuff. Like spending a little bit of money at the beginning might send you a long way because you will get to get the excitement that you were really chasing out of the guitar. But anyway, that's going into budgets and how we're going to do that. Um, that's all the things you're going to have to consider and in buying and what you need for the guitar afterwards. So next video, we're going to go on how to pick the actual guitar that you might like, um, going over feel and things like that. But see you guys in the next video.